Glad that you're with us today. You know, always amazed with what we see or hear in the news and then what do you believe, what you don't believe. And in all that the world is going through right now and the adversity that we see in Ukraine and the images that you've seen and I've seen, um, I don't watch this one show, but if you've heard of the show called, I think it's called, there's several of them, but it's called The View. You know what I'm talking about? It's a talk show. Anyways, there's several ladies around there. One of the ladies, her name is Joy Bear that's on there. And I know if you saw her quoted in the news this week that because of everything that's going on in Ukraine, She's just really upset this is going to disrupt her vacation to Italy. What? I'm like, did I read that right? So I referenced a few different things. I thought, wow. What? I, I just like shake my head, the perspective or what. And people like just don't have a clue. Uh, we live in a world that is so fragile, and if you're here uh, and you've been at City Church many times, you'll hear me say, hey, you know, only our perspective is that we feel sacrifices that we can't go out to eat this week. Uh, that's our definition of sacrifice. So anyways, it's just a crazy time, and I, and I really, really prayed and looked over this message and studied a lot news and the Bible. And so we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 1 through 6 on preparing for war, preparing for war spiritually. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and we're going to look at verses 1 through 6. Let's pray. Father, we pray for our world right now. We, we pray for our military. We pray for, Lord, our leaders in our country here. We pray you would give them wisdom on what to do or not to do when it comes to the instability that we see, the war that we are now in the midst of again uh, in a world that is so unstable. Lord, we pray for the citizens, the, these women that we've seen with their babies, Lord, I can't imagine what has taken place. So, Lord, <clears throat> we pray that miraculously you would bring believers along, uh, help them with your angels only the way that you can. And, Father, as we look to your word today, may it inspire us, encourage us to know what is important, what is right, and where our focus is. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to ask you a question before we read the, this, this passage here. How, how long does it take uh, for you to wake up in the morning? How long does it take? It takes everybody a certain amount of time. Some people, you know, they can get right up. Some people are like, you know, don't talk to me for a half an hour, you know. I mean, how, how long does it take for you to, to wake up? Is it 15 minutes? Is it 20 minutes? I, I don't know. But all of us at a certain point in time have, uh, it takes us a certain amount of time to wake up. And then you have your routine, right? You got to get your coffee or your Diet Coke or whatever it might be. And you have this routine and then, then you're kind of you're ready, right? You're ready to go whatever it is for the day. Well, when it comes to God's word in, in that we're living, people live in such a place today that we're, we just go, we're just kind of going through it again and going, get in, you know, spiritually just, okay, and uh, the Bible's there uh, by our bed or whatever. We just kind of go through the motions instead of God saying that we need to wake up more than ever. And what is taking place? Let's prove it. Why do we need to wake up spiritually? 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 6, talking about the end times that we're living in. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. In other words, you see what's happening. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then suddenly destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, 
and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should not overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light, sons of the day. We are not of night or of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. What are we watching? What's happening in our world today? We're seeing it. We're seeing the end times. We're living in it right unfold right before us. We just went through a couple years of, if you will, a plague or a pestilence, and we know what the Bible says about that. We see there's famines all over the world. We see there's wars. The Bible says one of the clues Jesus told his disciples, he said, listen up. He said, what we're living in, don't be deceived. And he gives us the analogy today, biblically, for you and I, it's just now we're going to get up and go through another routine. Wake up. God's saying to us, wake up what we're living in, do what's right, and do what's best. Because we're living in such a time that if we do what's right, and we do what's best, you know what? We don't have to be afraid like the world. The world is being overtaken like a thief. There is uneasiness. There is people that are so unnerved and fearful, but we're of the light. We can see what's going on. But we have to choose to do what is best. That means when it says to watch, watch what's going on and to be sober, to do what is best spiritually. What? Be prepared. How are we prepared for war spiritually? Well, we see what's going on, and then we do the best thing that we can for ourselves and for our families. Do you know in the United States of America today, there are more kids, there are more kids today, this day Sunday, in a sports program right now today on this day Sunday than in church? Think about that. Now, you know me, no one loves sports more than I do. And we talk about don't be legalistic. We talk about, hey, there's times your kids have tournaments and you're going to go to those and it takes up a weekend. You have, yeah, but where have we gone in our society? We've gone from uh, Little League, then we go to the, the Pop Warner uh, football leagues, and I don't know if those specifically are, but we know that there's football leagues on Sunday for kids, little kids. Okay? Then we go from the wrestling tournaments. Then we go to the basketball leagues. So we go from, it's not just, oh, Dallas, it's just a few weeks. No, we go from one to another to another. So here's the thing. Is anything really wrong with that? No. But is it the best? No. Now, you can get mad at me or you're watching here today and you can get mad at me. But guess what? Someday when I stand before the Lord, I'm going to be responsible for what I taught and what I said. And what I want you to know, just like you grab your child's hand when they're a kid, when you go out in traffic, right? And you hold them securely. You don't want anybody else holding their hand except you. So, that's my point. We can do what's good. We can, yeah, it's all good. But is it the best? God wants us to know to watch and to live soberly. Make the decision that is right. Make the decision that is right for your family because before you know it, they're not little kids anymore. They're teenagers. And they're making decisions that can change their life. What else does God's Word tell us? Let's look at another passage in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 12. Romans chapter 13 and verses 11 through 12. If you're here today and maybe you are a teenager, I, I want you to listen carefully to, to the story I want to share with you. And in Romans chapter 13, verse 11 and 12, and do this, knowing the time, that now it is high time. In other words, hey, Don't waste any more time. It's time to awake out of sleep. Here it is again. Wake out of sleep. 
How do we prepare? We need to be on guard. Wake out of sleep. We're prepared for that battle spiritually. For now our salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. How are you going to win today spiritually? God gives us a picture of armor. And then he also gives us a picture of light. So this light that, that we have, what does it do? It's hel- it helps you in a way spiritually that you and I can see what other people can't see. It, it always amazes me when you hear somebody interviewed, not everybody, but so many people in Hollywood, and they, give them, they talk about everybody, and they talk about how they're, they're always uh, anxious and nervous all the time. And I know why it is, because they have everything in the world, but they're not secure in their life about tomorrow. See, we know we have God's word. God's saying, I want us to wake up in this world that we're living in today. We are living in the last days. We are here, and God is saying to you and I today to wake up and to know the decisions that we make If we make them awake, we will make the right decision. God is telling us, and I want to ask you this question, are we like David? You say, what do you mean, Dallas? David is a young person. He was, when he was a teenager, King David. You know, there's very few stories in the Bible that you can actually name and people know today. I've talked to so many people uh, in the world we live in, they, they, they don't know Noah's Ark. They don't know, they don't know, we we take it for granted. They don't know Daniel and the lion's den. Uh, Maybe parting of the Red Sea and Moses, maybe. But most people know the story of David and Goliath. David and the giant. And there's a very interesting passage found in the Old Testament. There's two sides of of a great hillside, and they're all the children of Israel. In other words, the warriors of Israel are all on one side, and all the Philistines on the other side. And every morning, Goliath would come out, and he would yell across. He would go down to the valley, and he would yell, and he would yell, and it would go up the other side, and he would taunt the warriors of Israel, that you're going to lose. It's just a matter of time. You can't defeat me. I'm a giant. I'm almost 10 feet tall. You don't have nobody that come, come against me. And where's David? David's just this teenager. He's not even at war. He's back home. Stan says, hey, this is going on longer than what anybody thought, and I want you to take your brother some food on the battlefield. He goes, okay. So he takes his brother some food, and as he goes along, he starts to listen to the conversation. You know, you know those conversations. So you, ever, you, you do the same thing I do. You're at the grocery store, and you, you're ever listening to the person in front of you, right? You, you do that. You're just kind of listening, you know, what they're talking about. If they're on their phone, you're listening to the conversation. And they're talking, whatever they're talking about. Well, that's the same with thing. He's listening as he's going through the different parts of, of where they're set up for battle in the tents. And he's starting to hear that there's a stalemate. They're, they're just, nothing's going on. Why isn't anything going on? Why aren't they going further than where they should be? And wait a minute. And he's saying to himself, I, I thought we had the greatest God. I, I thought we served the, the true and the living God. So he finally gets his brother. He says, hey, what's going on? He goes, well, there's a giant over there, and, you know, and this is what's happening. We don't, we don't know what's going on. We've been here for a while, and we don't know how long it's going to go. He goes, well, isn't anybody going to fight him? And they go, well, no, not really. And he goes, I will. And, you know, his brothers, like, they tried to, if I use word, they tried to shut him up. Like, what are you talking about? Get out of here. You, you know, we do his siblings on there. Look, get away from me, right? <clears throat> so it gets back to, fine, nobody else is going to do it. Here he is, this teenage kid, and he's willing to fight the giant. So what does he do? Saul says, well... <clears throat> We don't have anything else we can do, <clears throat> but I'll bring him in to where I am, King Saul says, and I'll put my armor on him. I've got the best armor. Uh, at least he might 
be able to figure something out before the Goliath kills him and then we can come through. His, I don't know. And he's thinking all these things. So David goes in to King Saul. Saul puts his armor on him. He puts his armor all over him. Here's his teenage kid and the armor's hanging on him and he puts his sword on him and the sword's hitting the floor to where he can't walk. And you know what he basically said? This is what he said. He said, take these off of me because I'm not comfortable with this armor. You know what we get comfortable with? Well, let's see. And this is all good. <clears throat> you know, we look at the bank account. We look at all these other things and where we're at. Okay, we figure it all out. And we can take a deep breath that everything's going to be okay. It's like God's saying, whoa, wait a minute. I want you to look to me. I want you to know that if you look to me and you have faith, that means a trust factor if you look to me. So the question is today, in the world that we're living in today and all that's going on and all the decisions that you have to make, are you comfortable enough in your faith that you know that everything that you need to make the right decision is right here? To where you are comfortable enough that you will always go back. You know, we use the example that, that David, you know, he fought the lion and the bear. He did. Of course he did. But I still believe supernaturally that that was one. Those two battles before this battle. Because God was showing him that he was with him. In your life and in my life, God has shown you something in the past. As a young person or even today, to where you knew without a doubt only God could have done that. And because of that, it is what's called, it strengthens our faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In other words, faith is a substance. You're believing in someone that you know that has always come through for you, even though you can't see him. You know in your spirit that I'm going to trust the way Jesus has for me. And then you lock in, well, then how, what's the catalyst here? How does it all come together that I prepare for battle spiritually? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, we can be strong today in the world that we live in today and what you hear in the news tonight and tomorrow or what you hear about your health or what's going on in your family that you know when David said, okay, that's enough, I'm not comfortable with this, and what did he do? He went out with just a slingshot, some stones, and he said, you, he purposely said to Goliath and pointed him out, you will not defy the true and the living God. This is who we serve. As a young person here today, or you're watching, or maybe I want you to know God has incredible plans for your life. And if you and I are willing to trust him, and we're willing to trust him in, in such a way that we wake up and we see what's going on, or we say, you know what, Lord? I'm going to trust you in such a way that I don't care what the odds are against me, even as a teenager. I'm going to believe, Jesus, you've got this, and I'm going forward. And we know the rest of the story. The angel took the stone, hit it Goliath in the head, knocked him out. David went up, took Goliath's own sword, cut his head off. The victory was theirs. Why? Faith. Are we willing to believe today, no matter what we see in our world, no matter what you see happening in your personal life at work or whatever it may be, that you know without a doubt that God's word is telling you today is that we look at it and we have read that the way that you prepare for battle is spiritually and to know that ask yourself the question always, I, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with this. And this is what's going to get me through life. 
I want to be real honest and real, real with you today. Sitting back in the back of a car in Tucson, Arizona, it's getting ready to snort cocaine. And it was not, it was not all the sports I played, all the martial arts that I was involved with that stopped me. It was the moral foundation of the principles of God's word to where it stopped me knowing that the God had put fear in my life, my parents praying for me, and knowing what God's word had said that had been instilled in my heart to stop me from growing down the wrong path. I still did a lot of things that I'm still ashamed for today. But to know, to know, it's not the good things in this life that will protect you and to keep you from the devil. It's the greatest thing in this life, and that is to serve and trust in the true and the living God, and that's how we prepare for battle. Let me close with this last verse. Ephesians chapter 1, third time we've gone to these verses this year already. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 20. The apostle's praying for those that he loves in verse 17 through 20. He says to us today, Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Faith. Now, hold on here because I'm going to go back to another verse. Christ, this is another verse I'm quoting. Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. Now, let's go to the passage we're looking at. Chapter 1, verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you, give to you the spirit of wisdom, right where we are today in these last days, the revelation and the knowledge of him. Here it is. That the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. There's two passages I'll close with today that God tells us. He gives us a picture that he's sitting at the right hand of God and we can go to him and ask him for wisdom and he'll give it to us. And there's another great passage here. It says, and he wants you and he wants me to sit down with him at the right hand of God. And you know, no matter what all the turmoil is going on, if we're, if we're next to him, it's all good. You know, I was up with uh, uh, Alexis and, and her family just for a little bit this week, and, and uh, her, the daughter of the youngest, is the youngest one, and... Uh, well, Ellie, anyway, so I always get the names mixed up. The Sophie, Ellie, whatever, right? Her novellas, her, forget it. I'll get yelled at afterwards today. So anyway, so anyway, so it's, it's, I always do this. I don't know why I do this. Anyways, so, so I'm roughhousing with the boys. And so they come up, smack me hard. And I, I kind of like yelled out, you know, and she's watching all this. And all of a sudden, ah, you know, she just goes crazy. She was perfectly calm till then. What is the only thing that calmed her? It was her mother, right? She got in her mom's arms. Everything was good. Where you're at today, what is going to calm you is when you're sitting next to your heavenly father. And no matter what is going on, no matter how great the battle is raging, no matter what we see in the news, the way that we prepare for war spiritually is to know and to trust in our Heavenly Father and to know that I'm comfortable with who Jesus is in my life and what He can do. And I want to do and serve the one who is the best and who will give me what I need in this life. I don't want just what is good. I want to know that he gives me the answers for what I need to make life-changing decisions. 
in battle. In the heat of the moment, in a split second, Jesus will light your path and he will equip you for battle. And that armor of light will be so shining that you won't even doubt. You will see so clearly. You will be so calm because you know that you know that he is directing you with the next step. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. His word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Be as David did. Know without a doubt. It's not all these things that the world can give you. It's by trusting in the true and the living God that I'm comfortable to know. I'm so comfortable in my faith, it calms me to know and to see Jesus that he's always with me and he's never going to leave me and he's never going to forsake me. Let's pray. So our heads are bowed today and we'll close. We're going to give, we have so many hundreds and hundreds of people now that watch. We always know people tune in, whether it's right now, tonight, this week. I want you to know. I want you to know the battle that is raging. You can give it to Jesus by faith. And he will prepare you for what you're going to face. It starts at the cross. It starts at the cross. The apostle tells us in his word in Romans that all you have to do because Jesus did it all on the cross of Calvary is believe and to pray and to know in your heart that Jesus is the true son of God and he died on the cross for all your sins. So you're watching, you're listening, wherever it might be. God tells us in his word, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Say, Dallas, help me. I'll lead you in a prayer. Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. And I know that you had me tune in today to have the opportunity to accept you. And right now, I believe that you died on the cross and shed your perfect blood for me, for all my sins. And right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart by faith to forgive me for all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And from this day forward, help me to live by your resurrection power. Father, we thank you. It is a gift. It is your grace that saves us. It's not anything that we can do. Lord, we thank you for those that have accepted you today. Lord, if there's someone even here right now, Lord, may they come forward in a time of uncertainty to know that you will save them. You died for everyone in this world that's willing to accept you. Lord, if there's someone here today, may they step out, may a friend bring a friend, and Jesus, I will show them in your word, and they can pray and ask into their heart today. Lord, as we give this invitation, in Jesus' name.